the hot potato. I was sent to boarding school when I was very young. Not because my parents didn't love me. Not because we were rich. It was mainly because I'm not very bright. My folks, they spotted this very early on and they were like, off you go. Go to England, where homework isn't really a thing until you're 11. You don't have to play football on concrete floor that's painted in green so it looks like a green field. Go run on some real grass. Go. Go and enjoy yourself. You will never be clever enough in this system. So you need to go and build character. Go network with some white people. Go get them on your side while they're young. Character. That's what they always say. Go into boarding school builds character. Signing up for the army summer boot camp teaches you discipline and it builds character. Character. It's very, very important. It reflects who you are as a person and it gives you that winning personality if you've got a good character. Go and land a good job with that winning character. Come back and make us proud. Of course, this is not what they said to me when I was nine years old. That's just what I tell myself at night to help with the sleep. Aww. They pretty much just asked if I liked England. And the next thing I knew, I was hopping on a plane, flying thousands of miles across the world to sleep in a hall with a bunch of strangers' kids. My parents, they sent me to a boarding school in the middle of the school year. They couldn't even wait for the year to finish. I never graduated year four because of this. They were just kind of like, well, your yearly average grade won't get you into the top school in the district anyway, so what's the point in you finishing it? Time is money, kid. Let's go. The earlier you get there, the earlier you settle in, and the earlier you can network and build character. It doesn't sound like it, but man, I am very grateful for my parents in making that type of decisions for me. Going to school in England really let me lean into being dumb. And they were right. I would not have hacked it in Hong Kong. You know, I had tests to see if I'm dyslexic and I got extra times in exams. Which, if that happened in Hong Kong, that would just be called being stupid. Like, my own girlfriend, she doesn't believe I'm dyslexic. She thinks I'm making it up. True story. She thinks ADHD is a made-up condition. And in the West, the idea you can be anything you want to be as long as you do it with confidence, was life-changing. You are who you are, and you just bloody own that shit. I mean, English people are generally quite confident, aren't they? They are confident that every single person in the planet would know some sort of English. They are very confident that if they speak slowly, the person who doesn't speak English at all will understand them somehow. Yes, darling. But I get it. I get why they chose England. You know, I we had every Wednesday afternoon off just to play matches. We had PE lessons twice a week. And it was on actual grass on an actual field. You know, I can run where there's actual space. Do you know what PE lessons are in Hong Kong? First of all, your school building is like a giant square. And the middle at the very bottom is a, quote, playground. And on that playground, there's about 50 different markings on the court, so you can play the maximum numbers of different sports in one space. No wonder why everyone needs glasses in Hong Kong. <laughs> PE lessons in Hong Kong. We learn how to stretch. There was about five basketballs to share between 30 kids. So we had to play different sports in one lesson. We threw bin bags into hula hoops, put on the floor. Granted, I was young before I left, but at the same age, kids were playing cricket and hockey in England. Do you know how hard cricket and hockey balls are? I had to switch up from bin bags into hula hoops to hitting rocks with sticks. And you know what? If kids were playing this kind of sports in Hong Kong, especially in a proper Hong Kong local school, Parents would go absolutely ballistic. They would call the police on them. It's just too dangerous. My mum did not allow me to play football with kids in a park because she seemed to think that the street gangs are doing their recruitment with six-year-olds at 3pm 
in a residential area. Meanwhile, kids in England are sticking their heads through fences on purpose. Only, only, only white kids would do that. Kids in Africa are probably taught to run the opposite way as fast as you can if you see any sort of bars in front of you. Oh no, he didn't. I did enjoy school. I did, I did. I learnt a lot. Um, about people mostly. <laughs> Who cares about grades? We mark everything with a smiley face sticker over here. Two out of ten. But that's okay because there's a sticker that says brilliant work with a trophy on the background or glad to have you in a class sticker. I learned about different cultures and living with other people. I learned about the importance of making friends, the importance of being yourself and having character. Throughout the years, my report kind of developed a theme. You know, I was always get a B to an A to for um, participations and attitude, but always a D or an E for attainment. And usually the report would go something a little like this. Always a cheerful member of the group and encourage others for discussion work. Though we have made a few reminders on how this can be a problem when the work is supposed to be done independently. The natural layback attitude is not always conductive and can be influential in a negative way. We appreciate the enthusiasm and the creativity, but some students in the class could do with less distraction. I mean, it's, it's not too harsh. My teachers obviously just found me extremely fucking annoying. And I just did things like cleaning windows and ran a six form cafe. You see, in 2013, my year was the first lucky year to use this new study room for our A-levels in the Sixth Form Centre. Only our year, the year 13s, can use that room. There was no talking in the room, and it was like a proper study room. And we still had like a separate common room for all the high school drama. Now, everyone who went into the study room was always the ace that Annie's. The future of the world. The Oxbridge students. Or the other Chinese girls who just never spoke to anyone. Because they're too busy doing extra studies. Because what we're teaching in England, they've learnt that shit three years ago. And this is what we used to do. So in the um, study room, there's this window that looks out onto the common area. And we used to take out these cleaning products from the kitchen sink and spray them onto that one window in a study room, one by one. We would wipe down the windows with extreme care. I would fog up the window with my breath like this to get rid of this smaller spot that didn't even exist. And we even used to like use a mop to clean the windows at the point where it would just distract everyone in the study room. I know it was borderline annoying, but it was just so silly and it was just, you know, a bit of a laugh. Though eventually the A's that Annie's, they eventually flipped out because she would see this constant moving shadow in her mop papers and that we were disrupting her flow. We would also go in there and take food and drink orders, teas, coffees, toasts from everyone in that room. We would come back with the orders on a whiteboard, flipped horizontally, and we use them as trays to carry the food in. Some people absolutely loved it. Some people obviously wanted to kill us. To finish, mum, dad, 12 years later, I return home to make you proud. I hope you're proud of the character I am today. I hope you're proud of my creativity and desire to help other people during stressful times. I hope you're happy that I was never pushed to learn the basic maths, but instead I flourished in running around like a headless chicken. Your low expectation in me has led me to become who I am today. A solid 6 out of 10 with a good heart. Cheers, mum. If you love that, please, please, please do not subscribe, follow, download, thumbs up me of any of the sort. Because that will mean you're super duper weird, man. If you didn't like that, then fair play. 
You clearly have a way more exciting life than I do, so fuck off and go play with your really cool friends. And finally, if you have the same weird thoughts as I do, go to my Instagram page at awkward turtle for some extra bits. The awkward turtle, over and out.